Hello and welcome to another session of chemistry. Today I'm going to show you how to model ionic bonding. Some of the things we've already learned is about how many valence electrons atoms have and another thing that we've learned is how many electrons an atom either wants to gain or lose to create an ion and get a stable octet of electrons. We say it's eight electrons to be a stable octet. Today what we're going to do is we're going to model this through a chemical reaction to try and show how these elements go about transferring electrons to each other and then how they bond together, how they stick together to form ionic compounds. So let's begin. Uh, this that I have here is like a chemical reaction that I'm going to use as like a storyboard for the transferring of electrons and bonding of ionic substances. I have sodium and fluorine that are going to start out as their elements, not as their ions, but as their elements to begin with. That's what sets the stage, and then the transfer of electrons will take place, and we will show that in a diagram. And then on this side will be the other part of the story, the conclusion of the story, where sodium and fluorine will be bonded together as two ionic particles. So, to start the story off, or to start this reaction off, a model, first I'm going to draw in the number of electrons each of these elements have in their valence levels. Sodium has one electron, and fluorine has seven. Now, if you don't know how to tell how many valence electrons an element has, I have another video that goes over just that how to tell how many valence electrons, and how to draw these dot diagrams with the valence electrons. You might want to check that out. Well, sodium with its one electron, again, would like to have eight. So it has the option of either losing or gaining electrons. In this case, it's probably going to lose electrons because that would be easy if it lost one electron instead of trying to find seven electrons. Fluorine, on the other hand, it already has seven electrons, and it would be a good option for fluorine just to gain one. The ion is always going to take the easiest path, because every electron that it has to lose or gain requires more energy. And so it's going to do it by transferring the least number of electrons, therefore having the least amount of energy spent on that bonding process. So, um, to show this in our picture, we're going to show that sodium here is going to transfer its one electron over to the fluorine. Now, sodium has eight electrons in its new valence level, which is part of what we call the core electrons, or the electrons under the valence. Its new valence electron, has, its new valence level has eight electrons. And the sodium itself is now a sodium cation with a positive charge. Now, if you're unclear as to where the electrons went to, or why it has eight electrons now, or why did I give it a positive one charge, then I have another video that you might want to watch showing you how to predict what the charge is going to be for sodium. Fluorine has now gained another electron. So now fluorine over here has all eight electrons in its valence level. And overall, it has a minus one charge. The bonding takes place because positives and negatives stick together. We say electrostatically, 
Positives are attracted to negatives. There's a force between them. It's like magnets. A north pole and a south pole that sticks together. All right, so how's that for modeling your first ionic bond? We saw sodium transfer its electrons to fluorine, and the sodium now gaining a plus one charge, fluorine gaining its negative one charge. Both of them have stable octets of electrons, and they stick together because of their positive charges. Let's try this again. There's magnesium and oxygen. Why don't you try to go ahead and see if you can get ahead of me putting in your electrons and making the transfer and drawing the new ionic compound. Okay, let's see how you did. For magnesium, it had two valence electrons, and oxygen has six. Now I tell my students that I'm not so much concerned with where the electrons are placed. As chemists, we have a certain way that we like to see them placed on here. But at this point, the important thing is, is that you know magnesium has two electrons and oxygen has six electrons. If you want to look really cool, you'll do it like me. But I'll accept it. Other fashion. So, um, here, magnesium, in this case, isn't going to just transfer one electron over to this oxygen. It's going to transfer both of its electrons over to the oxygen. And oxygen just happens to have enough room to take on both electrons. On this side, I'll draw the conclusion to this bonding process. I've got my magnesium with its plus two charge bonded to my oxygen, who now has all the electrons and a minus two charge. Again, positive, negative, sticks together. That's what forms our bond. All right, I'm going to do this one more time. It is going to have a twist to it. So be on the lookout. Let's choose two things that we already know what their valences are. We know that magnesium has two electrons, and fluorine has seven electrons. And so we already saw before that magnesium is going to want to lose its electrons. So let's draw one of these electrons going over here to fluorine, because fluorine only has room for one more electron. But there's a problem. The problem is that magnesium really wants to give away Two electrons. Hmm. Well, it seems to me I need to have another place for this other electron. And it seems like the only thing that's offering any places for this electron to go are fluorine atoms in this reaction. And so what this magnesium needs is another fluorine atom. And this fluorine atom has a spot open to accept the other electron from magnesium. Now, let's draw the after picture. I've got my magnesium 
but it's plus two charge. And I have my two fluorines. I'm going to draw one on one side and draw one on the other side. This is a minus one, and that's a minus one. And I drew them on opposite sides because that's how they stick together, right? Positive, negative, positive, negative. We're not going to put the two fluorines together because that'd be like putting two south poles together in magnets. They're going to repel each other, push each other away. It's not going to be a very stable bond. Not ionically, at least. All right. I'm going to give you one more chance here. Now I'll give you a moment to figure this one out. You can hit pause if you want to and work out all the details of it. But I'd like to see or give you the opportunity to try this with these two elements. Go ahead. Give it a whirl. How'd you do? I hope you did well. Here's my answer. Think. Did you get this? Let's just review. Each sodium had one electron, and so the oxygen required two electrons. So just getting one from sodium still left it incomplete. You need to have two electrons in order to have it. So another sodium is the answer. It can donate its electron to the oxygen leaving us over here on this side with two sodiums, each with their positive charge, that are stuck to this oxygen. We took all the electrons and have the minus two charge. So for modeling ionic bonding, to kind of summarize, the idea that some electrons give away their, or some atoms, excuse me, give away their electrons, and some atoms take electrons. Each are trying to get a stable octet of eight electrons. In the end, once the transfer of electrons is taking place, then the elements will stick together, positive and negative, positive and negative, forming an ionic compound. All right, I hope this has helped. And uh, you can stay tuned for other ones that I'm going to be doing in the future on this. And if there's things that you missed, track other ones down uh, in my YouTube channel or in places that I keep 